Hello, welcome back to this video series, long-standing video series with hundreds of videos. Oh yeah, fun, right? This is all about A Course in Miracles, and I'm Tomas Garza, so welcome. Let's jump right into today's idea and the notion and the concept of the Holy Spirit. If you're familiar with A Course in Miracles, you'll know that the Holy Spirit is referred to in many, many different ways, most prominently as the voice for God. Now, it's also referred to as friend with a capital F, the universal inspiration, and other names, other names. So the Holy Spirit is essential to A Course in Miracles, and if you've grown up in a Judeo-Christian tradition, and I know that many of you who are watching this have, and if you are practicing a different spiritual tradition, you, you may have been raised in a place like the United States or Canada or Western Europe, where the Judeo-Christian religious tradition is by far the most numerous in those areas. So whatever that is, you may have had some questions about what exactly is the Holy Spirit anyway. Perhaps you were taught about the Trinity in Christianity, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, or, or Holy Ghost sometimes. When I, when I thought of Holy Ghost as a kid, I thought of Casper the Friendly Ghost or somebody wearing a white sheet on Halloween running around as a ghost. That's kind of what I thought of. Random association, isn't it? But I never really had, growing up, a clear grasp on what the Holy Spirit actually is. And it took my taking up A Course in Miracles in 2013 as my main focus of spiritual practice for me to really grasp the concept and what is truly meant by that. And nine years later, as it is with this material, it's still evolving, which is really cool. Spiritual practices is wonderful in that sense, isn't it? How it just continues to evolve. And the 24th time we look at something, we get it on a whole new level than we did the 23rd time. And it just continues to heap benefit after benefit and understanding. And the more we put it into practice, the more our experience reflects these ideas, which is the point of all of them. So let's talk about the Holy Spirit a little bit here today, the voice for God, whom we're encouraged in studying and practicing A Course in Miracles to take as our teacher. Yeah. So you may have adopted any number of other spiritual teachers or a different spiritual teacher, and that's perfectly normal and okay. One of the beauties, remember, about A Course in Miracles is it does not require that you give your single-minded, slavish devotion to A Course in Miracles. It's not a religion that says, okay, well, those of you who are not practicing this exact thought system are wrong. No, it doesn't, doesn't say that. Right? It's not fundamentalist. It's not a religion. It's a self-study curriculum, which anyone may take when they're called to do it. No problem, right? It's self-study. So you're not required to believe anything. And certainly, certainly Jesus, the author of A Course in Miracles, is never going to say that Anyone who doesn't read from this big bound, thick book is wrong. I mean, I grew up in a couple of different fundamentalist Christian traditions, and you, know, you may have had the same experience. Yeah, people at, at my 
church really believed, I mean, they truly believed that anyone who didn't go to their particular building, their particular building, concrete slab with walls and sheetrock, <laughs> that anybody who wasn't there on Sunday at 11 o'clock, and if they were a really good Christian, again, at seven on Sunday, and then possibly at 7.30 on Wednesday, you know, for more brownie points, right? I mean, they really did believe that if you weren't going to that building, that you were wrong and condemned to a fiery hell, a lake of fire. <laughs> I mean, really, they seriously believed that. And I, of course, was that kid who did not, but was dragged there. <laughs> a little backstory. Perhaps you can relate. Perhaps you can relate. What that did is fueled my own seeking. I'm very grateful for the experience. Not only does it represent an opportunity for forgiveness on a big, big level, right? It, it also fueled my curiosity and the questions that were shot down in Sunday school about what exactly is the Holy Spirit or I once said, I don't believe that 80% of the world is doomed because they're not practicing the same religion. I don't believe God judges against anyone. I don't believe God's jealous. Those were shot down to various degrees with, well, depending on the person shooting them down, various degrees of indignance, indignation, wrath, surprise, shock, perhaps profound horror that I was saying something that they felt as well. But yeah, I mean, what makes the most sense? Perfect love doesn't criticize. It's not capable of criticizing and God has no ego to be offended. So there's no sin. I mean, really, these are all things that A Course in Miracles spells out, but perhaps you've reached that conclusion through another means or on your own. And if you have, great. That's good. That's good. So let's talk about the Holy Spirit. Lesson 295, which is the idea that we're covering today in the workbook, says, the Holy Spirit looks through me today. The Holy Spirit looks through me today. Powerful idea. We're encouraged to see with the vision of Christ, right? We're encouraged to get out of our own way, which is to say, I can't do this on my own. Please help to our teacher, the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the universal inspiration, name your name, pick your term, right? Call it he, if you want to call it she, if you want to. It's actually kind of an it, isn't it? So whichever pronoun you, you choose to apply, just apply it, right? What we're doing in spirituality is we're asking our teacher to completely take the reins. It's a way of saying of myself, I can do nothing because it's, I mean, let's face it, all of the manipulation that we try to place on our experience doesn't work out. It doesn't bring us constant, continuous, lasting happiness. It doesn't bring us the peace of God, which as we've seen in the course is what we're really seeking. Each of us, we're really seeking that and only that deep down, the peace of God. We need help. We need a guide so that we don't continue to stumble in the darkness so that we don't continue to define and defend personal territory and guard what we think is right or special like attack dogs, which is what we do, all of us. So we give over the reins. 
we're encouraged to do that. And to the degree that you can do that, you'll have a vastly different experience. What is going to happen? You'll see things differently, like this idea promises us. The Holy Spirit looks through me today. When you see things as the Holy Spirit sees them, you see either an extension of love or a call for love. A call for love is an indication that we are to forgive. We see things the way the Holy Spirit sees them. In other words, the entire world is a built-in, living, breathing, learning opportunity. It's a living laboratory for us to awaken. It's a stage, if you prefer, for us to awaken. Lesson 295 is very powerful. So I invite you to read both the commentary and the prayer that accompany today's idea. This is the format that we're in here in part two of the workbook. There's an idea, and then there's a one paragraph commentary and a short italicized prayer accompanying each of the day's ideas. So again, I invite you to go through those and really let this idea permeate and sink in. And I want to call your attention to a specific passage in the text that I read this morning. No coincidence whatsoever, <laughs> right? That talks a little bit about this. Now, this is from, well, it's from chapter 30 of the text, part two, um, which is freedom of will. I just want to read a couple of sentences here on the video verbatim, and we'll talk about it. It's directly relevant to lesson 295 in the workbook, and as we'll see in the next video, lesson 296 as well. So, yeah. So Jesus says, do you not understand that to oppose the Holy Spirit is to oppose yourself? Yourself is italicized. Do you not understand that, that to oppose the Holy Spirit is to oppose yourself? He tells you, but your will. He speaks for you. In his divinity is but your own. One with God. In his divinity is but your own. He speaks for you. He tells you your will. You're asking and inviting the Holy Spirit as your teacher to run the show, to tell you what to do, to tell you what to say, to guide and direct you. You're asking that your higher self guide you and direct you. Same. The Holy Spirit is a part of you. It's not separate. So the Trinity, as it's presented and understood by many people as a tripartite God that's separate from you, is, is not the case at all. There's no separation of any kind. The Holy Spirit speaks to you of your will. So when the Holy Spirit looks through you today, you see things the way that you deep down truly will to see them as loving, as benign, as an opportunity for forgiveness, as boundless, as peaceful, as love and loving. The Holy Spirit speaks to you of your will. It's up to you to allow that. So in this sense, spiritual practice is very, very much about allowing. So I invite you, as always, to take this idea and then all of the ideas to heart. And if you have comments or questions, please feel welcome to write them here on YouTube or feel welcome to send me a message on social media. Facebook is Tomas Garza. I, I check Messenger <laughs> several times a day, like a lot of people. And on Instagram, I'm at Tomas Garza Teacher. That's my handle. 
And you can find me in either place and uh, feel welcome to reach out and ask any questions that you might have because the spiritual path should generate questions, right? If it doesn't generate questions, then that should be an indication that either um, your commitment isn't what it needs to be, right? Or that you're fully enlightened. So if you're not, you know, completely awakened, then the path should be generating questions. That's what a teacher is here for. And it doesn't have to be human, of course, right? I'm here to help, but the Holy Spirit is here to help. Your guide or guides are here to help, whoever that may be. Yeah. And we're seeing quite clearly the universal application of this material. It's universal. The course is universal in theme and application. So happy practicing today. And I invite you to take today's idea to heart and allow the Holy Spirit to look through you. Allow yourself to see things with the vision of the Holy Spirit who sees everything as an opportunity for awakening. All of life, all of it is an opportunity for just that. Why else would we be here? All right, we'll see you the next time.